action. You said Steve Harvey is sassy. Liberal black men are sassy. You said D.L. Hughley is sassy. Liberal black men are sassy, yes. You said Michael Eric Dyson is sassy. He's the super sassiest. You what about Van Jones? He's the sassiest of the sassiest. Now let's define sassy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think sassy is because I just showed you a clip of Michael Eric Dyson. This man was talking about how black men are supposed to stop trying to defend black men and start defending black women, start defending trans women, start defending LGBTQ plus IA people. And I'm like, and what group of people when it comes to politics does the group say, I'm going to abandon my own politics and serve and serve another people's politics. What group of people does that? How do we respect the black man who started the assassination of the one of the greatest black men to ever be in this country's character? That's the first time I ever heard of Michael Eric Dyson was writing a book about MLK and all of his flaws versus everything he did for us, which means you could go in a target without somebody taking a billy club to your head. I, I really, as a young man, I really respected Michael Eric Dyson. I loved his vocabulary. I loved his fire. He really reminded me of myself. But now he's a buffoon. He's, I don't like the term coon, but he's definitely fitting into that category as one because he's become less more about black people, less or more about black men and more about the sassy liberal agenda. I don't want to hit the guy with like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to punch him with no insults. I just really want to attack his argument. Why should I use my physical being to ne to negotiate on behalf of any other group of people? What other group of people are negotiating on behalf of me? Specifically, a black man descendant of an American slave. If you're going to politics is negotiating resources. And so what group of people is negotiating for resources on my behalf? Black men have a high incarceration rate. Black men have a very low literacy rate. When I say literacy, I mean reading at a sixth grade level. Most Americans don't read at a sixth grade level. When I say most, that means above 50%. Above 50% of Americans don't read at a sixth grade level. 66% of black folks don't read at a sixth grade level. And so who is negotiating on behalf of my people to have a better existence in America? None of these people, when we talk about the Van Jones, when we talk about Michael Eric Dyson, when we talk about Steve Harvey, D.L. Eugley, and so many more. Jeff Bezos gave Van Jones $100 million. It might have been $200 <laughs> million. Dollars. And then he said, do what you please. And Van Jones cried. All, oh, man. I just wanted to talk about Van Jones being a crybaby yeah, dog. Yeah, crying <laughs> ass brother. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Why have y'all not talked about a real political black agenda in this country? Why has there not been any discussion? We talked about this. But listen, because black people love entertainment and shucking and jiving so much, which is why they come to y'all and pick y'all to represent us, why have y'all not advocated for a real political agenda? There's no real Michael Eric Dyson. All you're doing is spewing out the liberal agenda. He used some big ass words. That's all he does. He says a bunch of nothing while saying a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of big words. Listen. He's a college educated brother. I do not listen. Michael Eric Dyson. I do not want to insult you. I know everything I said came off as insulting. Hey, it if is you what pick it is. apart his argument. He looks crazy. What is he saying? The man very specifically said this was like because he wanted to get people engaged. And since he wants to get people engaged, he knows that we like to go to church. Black folks love to go to church. Mm -hmm. Black women don't. You don't love your baby daddy, but you love you some okay. Jesus. You're going to love you some Jesus. And you might love the pastor, too. We ain't even going to go there right now. Oh, man. And so since Michael Eric Dyson understands the connection with the black community and the church, what does he do? He said, I went to church a couple of months ago. And then he said, uh -huh, uh, a year ago. <clears throat> Three years ago. And so now you're going to tell me a story about going to a church one time three years ago and make that indicative to the entire black experience. Stop it. Why, why have black men left the black church? Because it doesn't stick to the text as he didn't stick to the text, because everybody's all saying that we serve a God that supports all sexual perversion. When the text is very clear. Why do you keep doing that? You're a very intellectual guy. You have a lot of, you have a high in, in, intelligence. I'm sure your IQ is pretty high. And guess what? The text is the text. It already says, first off, it says this in the scripture. You can Google this. 
Sex outside of the marriage. Google the Bible. Go ahead. It's outside. It can. Or go go, go, go download the app. Buy the Bible. <laughs> buy, buy it. Get it. Hey, sex outside of the bed of marriage, people, which is between a man and a woman, is defiled. That means even fornication. Yes, you. You the fornicator. Guess what you're doing? Me the fornicator. It is, it, we've all fallen short of the glory, but it is defiled. So why do these people keep coming up here trying to push a perverse act or a perverse lifestyle when you talk in terms of the scripture? We're not talking. If you're outside of the scripture, you operate out of, outside of it. Cool. 20 years ago, if you had a, a, a different lifestyle, if you had a deviant lifestyle 20 years ago, it was career suicide if you were in the public eye. And so many people... We man, once you get some money, that gives you access to more people, whether you like men or women. And for some people who are really disgusting, when they like to go underage, they use their resources to exploit these people also. And so they want to try to cover up all of their behavior by saying everything is okay. And if everything is okay, then I'm never going to be a hypocrite, and so I can defend everyone else who's doing equal or worse than what I'm doing. Hold on, let's back it up. Yes. Jeff Bezos, Bezos, not back it up like that. Pause. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Bezos gave Van Jones a hundred over a hundred million dollars. Jeff, it was either Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. It was one of the two of these gentlemen gave him a hundred million dollars. And what was he supposed to do with it? Whatever he wanted. And what did he do with it? There, it's going to be documented what he did with it. But I would go. You wanted to go back to Van Jones. I think he cried for like three white people. <laughs> I think I think I think he cried for uh he, he cried for for Joe Biden. He cried for think, Joe Biden. Think, he, he's been yeah he did because he be crying. Yeah he be crying. And when you go back and you look up the history of Van Jones, he was a black power revolutionary. He was a black power black power revolutionary. And as soon as he got and as soon as he assimilated into the Democratic Party and and, and accepted their talking points. He became just a person who wants to represent the democratic ideas and not and not pro black ideas. And what are pro black ideas? That's a hard conversation because no one is rolling out a pro black agenda. I said the Constitution is pro black, and you'll get mad at me and uh -oh. say, "Well, back then we were slaves, and how could it pertain to me?" Well, you know, the Constitution has been amended over time to include you and to make you a whole human being to be able to participate in these freedoms that that we need to. The freedom of speech is how we're able to have this conversation. And we have to have, man, people don't like us. He said people, some people do not like us. They get angry at the things that we're saying because they disagree. He, he said that people in Atlanta told him not to go to Atlanta. <laughs> told me not to go. And so if he can't, if, if, they, if someone threatens me, shouldn't I have the ability to defend myself? The, the ability to defend myself is the Second Amendment. These are protected by the Constitution to give me a, the ability to be a whole free person. And now when you black person, when you say the constitution, the constitution doesn't pertain to you then tell me what document grants you your rights in America and what people defend your rights in America. And if you tell me those two things and then we can start having a conversation about black sovereignty. But if you can't answer those two questions, you need to shut the fuck up because <laughs> you full of shit. What's even sadder is a black woman told me through me trying to educate our people on black scammers. It was a black woman who told me that I should not go to Atlanta. It is black people turning on black people like Michael Eric Dyson and all the sassy super Saiyans of the liberal party <laughs> that are telling black sassy people this nonsense <laughs> that do not have any again, no true black agenda. You're not helping us by far. And also let me say this. How, me how, me how, how do you let Ann Coulter, how do you let Ann Coulter Pick up, by the way, we we do have to give Tariq Nasheed his props because he coined that term. He's the first person I heard say FBA. How do you let Ann Coulter define? Yvette Carnell will have an argument with them. That's some black on black beef. Uh, Yvette Carnell versus Tariq Nasheed is black beef. If you want to go through the YouTube streets, you, you can find lots of have back they, and have forth. Have they had some beef? Man, they got super beef. Oh, I gotta go see. Man, I ain't hey, gonna lie. black media. I like both. I like both. So let's. So I wanted to talk to you about what it means to be a black content creator, especially a black YouTuber, and how difficult that journey is. These people are YouTubers. Yvette Carnell is a YouTuber. Roland Martin is a YouTuber. Tariq Nasheed is a YouTuber. 
YouTube is the new, is the new revolution. And now who has the best message for their people? And now Yvette Carnell and, and Tariq Nasheed, she even has beef with Boyce Watkins. <laughs> I might not be mad at that. All I'm saying is <laughs> we cannot coalesce right. on any type of black identity to say that this is what we're going to do. And so Yvette Carnell, she actually created a political advocacy group for ADOS. And so she was like, I don't think FBA is an actual political movement. It's just terminology to make you feel good. Foundational black American sounds a whole lot better than American descendant of American slave. I'm not mad at that. However, this is the issue with us. We got to keep the in-house beef behind closed doors because I feel like. How can you have closed doors on YouTube? Well, it's entertainment at the end of the day. What I'm saying is it's hard. The conversation is on social media. Nigga, when someone told me there was a black Twitter mother, nigga, I was typing in the search yeah. bar black Twitter. I was trying to find black I, Twitter. I, I, I feel you on that, but it's like, look, there is no such thing. I think FBA and Ad, Ados but there's, are there, there's no boundary yeah, that yeah, says yeah, yeah, no yeah. one else can participate in this in this content. But do you think beef in black media helps us? I think that because we're gonna probably have a lot of beef. Talking I about think the, it's a the convert- sassy super saiyan. If if you're dedicated to the progression and the advancement of American descendants of slaves, then it can be a great conversation. But if you're focused on you getting views, and you're not focused on in, improving the view of black folks from poverty so they can see more better. Ain't no, ain't no such thing as equity. There's no such thing as equity. Roland Martin is the fifth heartbeat of the sassy five heartbeats, by the way. Hey, you know. D.L. Ugly said that he would debate Dr. Umar Johnson at his school. I thought that was funny. You know, it's funny. I think that Dr. Umar would not be a bad person to debate the ideology of the Liberal Party, but he's a scammer. Why are we talking about the ideology of a mother sucking god dog it <laughs> comedian? Who is D.L. Hughley? <laughs> or Steve Harvey. Tell me one D.L. Hughley joke. Tell me any D.L. Hughley joke. I do think D.L. Hughley is funny. I'm not, I'm going to say he's not funny. <laughs> if you ask me to tell you a Bernie Mac joke, I'm going to say, was the milk and cookies? Yes. <laughs> Him you know, downstairs, I, I, huh? <laughs> why are entertainers being at the forefront of political discussion? That is an issue. They're I, I, not. I always said that. But we put them there. But they're, they put themselves there. So politics is about who has the money in the black community. Entertainers do have the money. We look at Oprah as a billionaire. And these people generated all their wealth from entertainment of selling you their lifestyle. Jay-Z, Puff Daddy, all these debaucherous ass individuals. Steve Harvey says when Dr. Umar said he was offered 10000 and he said he made the claim that these other people were offered money, but he put it at a numerical value of 10000 Steve Harvey says, oh, it's going to take more than 10000 to get me out the house. Ignorant ass shit to talk about. That's not the fucking point. Where is the black agenda? Everybody, Dr. Umar, everybody. Where? In fact... Let's say Yvette Cornell may be the most person. Because somebody told me when I made a story about her that she's problematic. But she's the only person that provides a real, like, solution. Just look at Steve Harvey. This man is is uberly wealthy. Him and Magic Johnson and all these individuals, they, they ride on yachts together. Their families take trips together. They go on vacation together. You asked me about the, the black elites, Charles Barkley, all these individuals. They use their black experience to make as much money as they possibly can. And they said, hey, black people, if you ever become a, a, as as good as a broadcaster as me, if you ever play basketball as good as me, if you ever sign a deal as big as mine, then maybe you too can come and participate in, in the black boule, the black bourgeoisie. But if not, nigga, good luck. God bless America and fuck you. Let's take it back to when guys like this, Ali, we're not afraid. It's a terrible fucking person. We're not afraid to initially. We're not afraid to speak out. I don't mean he's a terrible person. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're not afraid to. And and I say initially here because you know they found a way to quiet him later on. But he was not afraid. If you go look at Muhammad Ali's early uh, interviews, as far as how he felt about living in this country, how I'm he not, felt I'm, about I'm the just giving you some pushback. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about entertainers. This person is a boxer. Who gives a shit what a person who gets punched in the face has to say? He actually has something to say, though. I'm saying, if we, what did he if, say, though? Well, he was speaking against the atrocities of black people in America. He wasn't afraid to talk about that on, on TV in front of white men. When with I saw Ali- black with two black veterans, like right. the, the MG, the GI Bill, it gave me the ability to do things that I couldn't have done if I wouldn't have went to the military. But did you see? I did you see Ali do Van Jones activity in front of white men on in his interviews back in the day? I didn't see that. Yes, 
You did? Man, the whole interaction, the everything that he did was it was high level theater. His poetry, his prose, everything. He was getting when he wasn't boxing, he was going and taking speaking engagements at white colleges so he could try to feed his family. Like once you take a stance, it's hard to it's hard to be pro black because because black people have to feed you. Okay. Damn. <laughs> so we don't feed our political. Uh, we do not feed our political political leaders. I can't keep you safe. I cannot keep you safe. Dick Ooh. Gregory's best friend was Medgar Evers, and when he was going to see his friend, Medgar Evers got shot down in front of his home. Like we don't have the infrastructure to keep our black rich people safe. That's why they gotta move somewhere uh, where they got protection. Preaching. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm preaching, God. I'm just. It's, it's just what it is. No, nah, no, nah, that's what's up. Where, where are we supposed Preach. to go at? Yeah. We supposed to go buy a house down the street so I get a kick dough and, get, and take my shit. Mr. B said that he was. He's from North Carolina, and as he ascended in the YouTube media space as a white man, they kicked in his door and took his stuff. He was like, I can't. I can't do this no more. I'm too big. I got too much money. And then once you get to the space where, where you can afford to live at, how many of those people look like us? I was saying this before we got here, and that's what I really wanted to talk about. We Again, we have talked about so much political ideology here, but we have to address. It's not an elephant in the room. We got to address black people issues. What he just said is very powerful. I ain't going to lie. I, like, I was going somewhere with that, but when you say that, it makes me turn around and say, he's right. We have wanna, to wanna, politically align. Je it's Jeff Bezos. It's Amazon that's going to give Van Jones $100 million. You laugh not with, our people. You laugh with me because it, because we, we were having a conversation and we're referencing the same literature. The black person problem, read a book. And, and don't and, 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 and can't, it, make sure that it's nonfiction, huh? Read a book that's going to improve the quality of your life. Read, think, and grow rich. More How than about 48, that? More than forty-eight laws of power, because that's the favorite. But I'm just, I'm not hey, saying 48 it's forty-eight laws of power is great. But if you, if you like Robert Greene as a writer, then read the laws of human nature, right? Huh? Understand how humans behave and why they behave that way, and then simultaneously have the perspective to understand that this is just coming from the perspective of Robert Greene. And your lived experience, modify the information to your lived experience. This right here is a task in being an effective person, but it requires work. And I'm asking black folks, are you willing to do the work to be an effective person in America? Do you want to be an effective politician? Do you really want to be a revolutionary? Where the hell are the revolutionary musicians? Where's the Miles Davis? And I don't give a shit that he was getting high. Some Man, I was walking down the streets, one of my favorite experiences. I'm walking down the street at 3 o'clock in the morning because... I'm stressed out from the anxiety of missing my children and I can't get to my children. So I'm trying to burn off this thing at three o'clock in the morning. I'm passing up two individuals who love narcotics. I don't want to call them crackheads, but these are two individuals that love narcotics at three o'clock in the morning. One man says to the other, you cannot socialize in America. If you're not fucked up, the other man asked him to elaborate. He says, at least 90% of America is on something. They're on caffeine. They're on nicotine. They're on alcohol. They're on the fentanyl. Man, you're smoking marijuana, THC. You're doing something to dull the pain of knowing that you really ain't got no freedom to have autonomy in America. And now if you go more specifically to the black experience and America is in front of your face trying to replace you with niggas who are trying to pretend to be like you. Holy, what am I supposed to do? Man, that's amazing. That's amazing what you just said, and that's very true. Reading is fundamental. Information, it's the access to information. We were talking about this the other day about the internet speeds here. Just having internet speed to be able to access information. I remember back in the day when we were uh, downloading music, and you would see like these little, they would tell you like the modems and stuff, it would pop up. You see yes. this T1, T2, like, damn, what that mean? Like, I got regular dial-up, <laughs> my shit moving slow, but this is all fast. If someone calls your house, your, your shit is messed up. Yeah, we don't have access to information because we are not fighting for access to information because we don't understand that that's really the most important thing we should have. And guess what? There are things that you can't find on the internet. There are places where there are information that you really have to go get a book. You need to get a book and really get inside of it. And it's so funny that in 2024, that is still true that guess what? If you want to hide something, you put it in a book. It's so much information. You got to go outside of YouTube University, although we should put the links to anything, uh, Think and Grow Rich here too. By any, Napoleon anything Hill. you Great see book. on the Internet, social media, 90 percent of it has been produced and edited for from some type of vantage point. Mm hmm. By people like me who edit videos 
put the spin on the video, serve it to you, and you believe what I think because I created it in a way for you to believe what I think. Hi, it's called indoctrination. And if you don't know the tools that the people are using against you, if you're sitting there reading a book, I cannot change the page in real time while you're reading the physical, tangible book. Kanye West is one of my favorite artists, right? I like the way this person creates, just creates in general. Right now, his music that are that's on uh, the DSPs, they're living pieces of art. He changes them however he sees fit. All of a sudden, he'll just change the drum pattern on, on the music. What happened to the last edit? If you ain't buy it, you ain't got it. That's true. And so this is right now, information right now, they're changing the meaning of words in front of your face. So if you don't own a dictionary that's prior to all this woke stuff, then you might read a book and, and uh, the modern dictionary might have uh, a birthing person. And in the old dictionary, it says a woman. <laughs> you know what's wild, though? I want to take it back a little bit. You said that we don't have the infrastructure to protect our rich people, but we got all sorts of gang culture. We got all sorts of gang and drug culture that is very dangerous. Like, hey, there's places in this city, there's places in every major city in America where there's our people there that you can't go into because, it's, because it is highly dangerous. How we don't have these warriors protecting or may or making up the infrastructure to protect black people from harm. Why are we so in love with debauchery? Why are we why do we need debauchery and perversion so much? Because guess what, Michael Eric Dyson? When you start talking about those other groups that have nothing to do with real black liberation in this country for black Americans, you're supporting a piece of that too. I'm sorry, when you're supporting alternative lifestyle and when it's when we're talking about sexuality, you're a part of that. We eat up debauchery. We do anything to protect debauchery. I don't, I don't know their politics, but do the Crips and Bloods have any type of relationship when it comes to the police departments that regulate their areas? I know when it came to the Italian mafia, the Russian mafia, they paid bribes and things to the people who are patrolling their communities. Say, hey, you can't do that without us saying that you can do that. Or I know where you live. And that's and that's a different type of power. We don't want to acknowledge that violence is what makes America what America is. But everything is just like when I say that politics is negotiating resources, war is what happens when that negotiation breaks down. When I can no longer feed my family, when I can no longer asset, access basic human goods, then I have to do something. And the thing that I have to do, surviving is not wrong. Defending mm -hmm. your family is not wrong. Mm -hmm. These are basic human rights. And so as you control my speech and you tell me what I can and cannot say, no matter what you do on this Internet, <clears throat> when it comes time, we're going to do what's required to be done. But guess what? Those men that we just named, you know who they really represent? Who? I think they represent the majority of the black men in this country. Most of us are scared. <laughs> Holy moly. Not the men right here. Most black men are scared most be, be black people what, what i mean afraid is of? we're afraid of anything that represents power except for ourselves the we'll fight against the ourselves responsibility of self-governance yes and we're definitely afraid of white people you will see <laughs> you will see a gangster and you've probably seen this before you'll see the most gangster black man be very hard and uh very tough against his own people as soon as he see a white cop show, show what does he do he tuck his tail what's he because assault on a public servant is five years. He could see a white man without that uniform on. He gonna change his tune. If, if I shoot a black man in a black area and no one saw and no one sees anything, then I'll never go to prison for me killing that black man. And that's sad. But if I touch that police officer, I'm going to prison for a long time. Or that white man. And they and they, and they gonna whoop my butt. <laughs> we are we we are afraid of white people. Black men collectively are afraid of white men. That's why you get. That's why you get Van Jones crying, and we're thankful for what we switch up our. I, our whole I, re, I rebuke that thing that you just said. I wish I could. I, I, man, I rebuke that. I'm, <laughs> you, not, you I'm not. I'm not afraid of. I'm not. I, ain't afraid I didn't of say that. us. I, I'm not either. I'm a black man. But guess what, man? In the Bible, uh, when 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 uh, Lot was negotiating, or Abram Abraham was negotiating for Lot when they're about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he, they asked him, "Is there?" Is there 10 good men in Sodom? Huh? <laughs> Is there two good black men in the black community? Because if we got two good black men in the black community, the black community is exceptionally powerful. I believe that. That's what I believe. Because you, you, you're talking about Martin Luther King. That was one, you know. And then, and then you had uh, Malcolm X. That was another one. And you had Medgar Evers, and that was another one. And then you had Dick Gregory, and that was another one. And then, and then you had uh, James Baldwin, and that was another one. 
And so I'm just saying, hey, where y'all at? But we have to set the example. We set the example with this channel. We th we set the example with how we run our business. We ex we set the example with how we f facilitate our relationship. You, Most black you men. You set the example on how you talk to your children. Which how you talk to your children? How you treat your mate? Black men have trouble dealing with each other. Black men have trouble dealing with each other across I've the board. I've been to prison, nigga. Like I understand. Hey, it's it's it's, it's fade all bar none, nigga. Like you gotta <laughs> you gotta get your paper or else you might not be able to eat. Facts. You be sitting there trying to make your soup and niggas like once your soup. And if you don't fight for your soup, then nigga, they gonna take your soup every day. You have a long, a long sentence. The sassy black men of America don't represent me. And I want to see bearded black brothers step up. I want to see bearded black brothers. Dr. Cornell West has a long ass beard. <laughs> hey, shout out to Cornell West and Tavis Smiley. Why? He's a sassy ass nigga. You think Cornell West is sassy? He'll put a gay woman above your black ass <laughs> in three seconds. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Cornell West is sassy, but you know what? He is a part of that liberal. He is a part of that liberal uh, agreement. But I I did like the fact that Cornell. All these all these all these brilliant. Do you think Tavis Smiley is sassy? All these brilliant people who have this dictionary memorized to the back of their head, and as soon as they get into a tough spot, they start saying misogynistic, yeah, patriarchy, like white supremacy. That's all these see, brilliant people can Cornel say. Cornel West and Tavis did get pushed back on Obama early on. They caught a lot of flack for that. That's the one thing that I appreciated about Cornel and Tavis. Didn't I didn't have, really feel they like didn't they didn't have no alternative. Thing. They didn't have no alternative. You ain't got no solution, nigga. I don't want to hear your problem. I'm, that's me, personally. <laughs> don't hey, offer right. me your fucking critique if you can't fix it. And if you see me working at something, be like, I don't know if you should be doing it like that. How, how should I do it? Tell me how I should do it. You don't know that neither? Then shut the... Mm. Why are we the vessel for pushing gay agenda, though? I don't understand that. I'm not. No, I don't mean we as in us. I mean black people. Okay, because they want to they want to control the narrative of America. If they understand the black church and, and rap culture, gangster music, or just black culture in general drives America... They have to get the black church to say gay is okay. They got to get Jay-Z to say gay is okay. They need Beyonce to say it's okay to be gay because if they don't say it, don't nobody else in the black community believe it. We hold, we, we hold each other accountable because we ain't got nothing but each other. And if we start believing in this gay agenda and we stop making babies, then we're about to go bye-bye. Does Michael Eric Dyson have a wife and kids? Fuck that nigga. <laughs> He's not fighting for me. He's not. He's not. He's not fighting for me. He's not, man. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.